All right. Thanks. This meeting is being recorded. All right. Um, are we ready to go? Yep. All right. Good morning and welcome everyone to Oak City Church Morning Bible Worship. And we're so happy that you're here and joining us this morning. We're going to ask for a prayer from Sister Dolores Milton. And praise the Lord. Welcome back, Minister Harper. Thank you. And I know I'm leading us in prayer, but I would like to just read the scripture before we pray. We're going to take a page out of Lady Grace's page. <laughs> Isaiah 65, verse 24. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. <clears throat> and we bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you now in Jesus' name, Lord God, to say thank you, to thank you for your goodness, to thank you for your mercy, to thank you for your great grace. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather again to call on the name of Jesus, when we know that there's power in that great name. Father, we thank you for how you kept us, how you provided for us, how you protected us, how you shielded us from danger seen and unseen. Father God, we came back this morning to say thank you. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to the cross to pay a sin debt that he did not owe God, but that you know we could not pay, Father. And we want to say thank you, Father. He took that horrible beating, Father God. He bled that horrible death, Father. He was buried, God, but three days later, he rose with all power, all power to heal, all power to save, Amen. all power to deliver, God. Amen. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your love, God, your mercy, God. Thank you, God, we thank you for your forgiveness, Father. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would touch every heart, God, meet every need, God, according to your will and to your way, God. You know us individually and you know us collectively, God. And God, we know that we can stand on your word of assurance, your promise that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for it, Lord, God. For it is in Jesus' name we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. And we say to God be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. At this time, we will have a scripture reading by our own brother, Bernard Haley. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I will read uh, First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Ye are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Women's prayer meeting and Bible study on the first and third Wednesday of each month at seven o'clock. Just want to remind you, at this time, we will have music under the direction of Sister Cynthia Smith. Praise the Lord. I don't, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm yes. not sure what I'm back here. <laughs> Where are you? I need one more person. <laughs> Amen. Just to remind you that we have a friend in Jesus. Uh, we can take it all to him. He's waiting with his arms wide open to carry our burdens and answer our prayers and strengthen us and encourage us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for the friend that we have. Oh, a friend we have Oh, 
the Lord. Take everything to God in prayer. At this time, we're going to present our pastor, Bobby Ladd, who will be teaching us today. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. We've got another hand praise for these hymns. You know, I uh, I really appreciate our youth and uh, uh, some of the hymns, they, some of the songs they sing, I was telling Grace, this, some of this music is still so new to me, you know, some of the music we sing nowadays and uh, the young young people love and uh, it's beautiful and uh, worshipful, so worshipful. But uh, I'm old school and I sure appreciate these journey back these hymns because they are so foundational, Amen. so Amen. sound, Amen. The document is so Amen. solid. Yes. Sharon wore me out last Sunday with uh, blessed assurance and also in grace. I mean, you know, it's almost kind of one of those things where you say I was going to teach on 
first Corinthians, but I'm teaching on blessed assurance this morning. And she sung her heart out. And then Cynthia came back with what a friend we have in Jesus. And oddly enough, I was singing blessed assurance most of last week. And I was singing um, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus the week before. And I was singing most what a friend we have in Jesus mostly this week. And I was trying to find me a note. I could, if I said, if I could just hit one note on this thing, maybe I could sing it. And I walked around here scaring these folks. Um, Trying to hit my one note I could could uh <laughs> but uh, I was singing in that part that says uh, uh can we find a friend so faithful and I was trying to hit who just right who with all of our sorrow share <laughs> I said if I could just hit this who right I'd be all right <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so it's just a blessing for me to um, hear that song wow. bless me I just want to take this time uh, I was talking to my wife last night too and I want to thank um Church, as for all, just just being the people you are, and how encouraging you are. Uh, this uh, over these years that we've been on virtual, going over over a year now, we've been on virtual, and just seeing all your faces, how faithful everybody's been. I uh, just appreciate you. I was looking through the list, and I had some names I didn't get to get the call out right before the thing. And I see Counselor Stephanie, and I saw uh, Brother Carl King. I saw some others on that didn't get called out. Uh, I just I just appreciate. It. I just get blessed by seeing these names just showing through. Sister Ford, if y'all don't mind me, I see Fanny online. And uh, Haley's uh, always here. Uh, and um, and I see who else I see. I see some numbers I don't recognize. Mm -hmm. Kenny and uh, Kenny and George. Amen. So just give God a hand praise for all you, you faithful saints. Brianna, I see all. I look through. I just get blessed. Who's that? Pearl. Uh, <laughs> so I look through sometimes. I'm just blessed by you. And uh, that, that, I'm, I'm blocking it. Out. Okay. Anyway, just wanted to, what a blessing is to see the, the faithful ones. And, what a blessing you've been. Thank God for the faithful uh, elders we have in this church and ministers. Uh, Minister uh, Harper, Evangelist Tyler, let's give him a hand praise. It's just uh, God's been good. And uh, our elders, Pastor John, Pastor Daryl, you know, the second to none. God bless them. And um, uh, Hazel David, our cousin, is also on here. So thank God for all of you. Thank God for my wife. This will be our 35, 35th year anniversary in June. And uh, I tell you, it's just a blessing. I was just like, I was looking at it this morning and going, wow, I just can't believe after all these years, you know. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> you look as good as the day I married her. So I just thank God for her. Anyway, so I just spent a morning of reflection for me. But hearing these hymns just kind of really put me in a, in a, just in that same frame of mind. <clears throat> thank God for his, uh, his uh, goodness and mercy. Oh, I thank you. I see your comments, Sister Stephanie. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, very, very satisfying. So, um, anyway, just uh, take that in. And I just thank God for that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, we'll give God a hand praise. We'll get ready to start this blessed this morning. Uh, Want to uh, finish up in First Corinthians? I think I'm. I may finish today, may finish next Sunday. I got one, but uh, the thing is there. Uh, Pastor Dale, if I will ask you to lead us in prayer for the lesson this morning, then we'll jump right in to get into this. I should get done, hopefully, either this week or next. I'm on verse, uh, I'm on verse uh, 18, right? 18. Yeah, so I'm, I should hopefully get done this morning. So three weeks. So... Uh, Pastor John. <laughs> oh, was it under? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Dale, you can pray. And if you have some words you want to introduce, you know, say, say it soon, you can do before you pray. So. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your blessings, your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your long serving, your faithful. Mm -hmm. That's with us, Lord. We ask you to um, visit us again this day. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to come share your word. Lord, we ask you to speak, teach one of our hearts and minds here together today, Lord. Give us what you want us to have, Lord. Mold our hearts and minds be receptive to your word this morning, to your glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I want to conclude that little segment by saying, uh, as faithful as you've been and as loving as you've been, God's been more faithful. Amen. Amen. And God's been, let's give our Savior a hand. <clears throat> praise God. God is faithful. All right, so we stopped at verse uh, 18 in this um, uh, passage. Uh, let's see here. Let's just do here. 
Yeah. You got up on the screen, but I'm looking at my paper Bible. Feel old school. Like to see that stuff on paper. <laughs> Verse 18. All right, um, I need a reader for verse 18. I may interrupt you, but uh, give me a reader for verse 18. For the preaching of the cross mm -hmm. is to them that perish foolishness, mm -hmm. but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Okay, and so Paul says here, the preaching of the cross is to them which are perishing foolishness. In other words, it makes no sense. Uh, the same writer Paul said is to the Greeks uh, foolishness and to the Jews is a stumbling block. And what he meant was that it, it doesn't make any sense. This is, this is why the majority of the world and even we as Christians have a hard time with our situation. We cannot believe God's not going to get us in the end for what we've done. In our minds, we think God is somehow taking record of every little sin. He's going to get us. And because uh, it makes sense. Uh, and um, and when you tell people that Christ was punished for their sins, people have a hard time trying to reconcile that because in our society you get you know you get you you pay for what you get you you get what you deserve. And Christianity is a faith where we teach you don't get what you deserve. We deserve condemnation. We deserve penalty. We deserve to pay the price. But God took our sins and put it on him. I told a story a long time ago of a pastor and a, a friend of mine, a great friend of mine in Tallahassee. He was going to punish his son for, for some wrongdoing. And the daughter um, was afraid it's going to be too hard on the son and said, well, he'll go easy on me. And so she stepped in and said, I'd like to take this, this, this. And he was a corporal punch. He said, I'd like to take this whooping for her, for him. Thinking, well, I'll get it easy because I'm a girl. And this dad did not like to whoop his kids. <laughs> and uh, and this pastor, which I probably would have, me, I would have let them both off the hook. You know, I'm th that, that's my mentality. You know, I'll let them at that point, you know, if I'm getting rid of this bank of kid and one step in. My mentality is I'll probably let them both off the hook. I'll let them, because I'd be so, you know, um, yeah, I don't know, I just kind of moved. Um, you know, move by. But this particular father, a pastor, decided to teach an optic lesson. And it was, I guess, you know, depending on how it was received, because the kids are both doing well today, I guess it was a pretty powerful optic lesson. He, uh, he says he took his daughter and he spanked her um, uh, hard. <laughs> and she was surprised. She, she's actually, she's the one who told me about it. And he told me about it later, but he told me about it because uh, I was teaching the youth and she told me this is what happened. And she said, he spanked me hard. And she was shocked at how hard it was because in our culture, you know, it's just something you don't typically see. You don't see one kid stepping in for another. I mean, you certainly don't see uh, that kind of justice being administered by a parent. But it stayed with me and, and it stayed with her. And his message was to her, uh, ultimately, how Christ took the punishment for us. It was an object lesson about the cross. And while some of us may disagree with that particular uh, style, some may disagree with corporal punishment. I'm not here to get into that. It's still astounding to us when justice is administered knowingly uh, to someone other than the perpetrator. And that's why Christianity is hard for some to accept. Uh, every other faith that we know of, you constantly make sacrifices to the God uh, of that faith. And, um, and, and it's all about what you give God. This is the only faith that I know of where the God himself wrapped himself in flesh and died for man and took his punishment. You think about the fact that Jesus allowed himself to be spat upon. God, who spoke the world in existence, loved us so much that he allowed himself to be wrapped in flesh and spat upon God. See, Jesus was no less God than any of us can imagine. God allowed himself to be spat upon. God allowed man, his creature, to put a crown of thorns upon his head. If you can imagine the depth of that kind of love, um, and he did it because there was no other way for all of us to have our sins paid for once. There was no sacrifice. He's not, we didn't want anybody to perish, but there was no goat or no bull or no calf that was good enough for him to just look past sin. 
God is too righteous and too holy to just sweep sin under the rug. The sins had to be paid for. And there was nothing we could offer to pay for those sins. And when nothing else could help, God said, I will sacrifice myself. And I will shed my own blood for their sins that all who believe in me can receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. And to, he, he went to the cross and allowed the creature to torment him and put him in the person of the son on the cross and crucify him. And said, now all who believe that I die for your sins, I'll give you life eternal. That's, that's foolishness to the world. But to us which are saved is power because it delivers us from the bondage of performance. We live right and try to do good just because we love our daddy, we love our father. We don't live right and do good trying to be saved. <laughs> it's a response. God has good kids and bad kids. God has kids that don't like to come to church and don't like Bible class. And God has kids that love church and come that they're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It's not based on performance. So rather than, you know, fasting 30 days and living lives that would uh, make uh, monks proud, we can live our lives normally knowing that by grace we're saved through faith. And it's to the world foolishness, but to us it's power. It's the power of salvation. It's the power of confidence of knowing that our sins are paid for. Our count is straight. All we do is confess our sins and God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We talk about why is it just for God to forgive us our sins? Because he already punished Christ Jesus for our sins. Therefore, it's justice. He's not going to punish us and Christ. He punished Christ. The preaching of the cross says to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God because it gives us peace that we in this world not of it. And in the end, that last chapter is written, we'll be saved. Verse 19. It is written, uh -huh. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Oh, I also want to see if our other elders had any comments on verse 18 before I go to 19. I'm sorry. No. no. Not for me, at least. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> verse 19. <clears throat> I want to destroy the wisdom of the wise. Pastor John, were you good too? Okay. Yes, sir. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the truth. God says in his word, I'm going to confound man. He, 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 he is letting, he's letting us know from the beginning that, that, that his ways are so much higher than us, than ours. And he's going to do things that don't make sense in saving us. Now, in saving us and not holding you accountable for your sins, he's done something that doesn't make sense to the wise person. Does he also have the right to do things in your life that don't make sense to you as well? He saved you in a way that doesn't make sense. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> It don't make no sense for you not. You did it. You know you did it. You're guilty. And God declares you not guilty. God declares you innocent. That don't make no sense. If you allow my step that way. Can we also deal with the fact that certain other things in our life don't make sense and recognize that God is not answering to us? And if he saved me in a way that doesn't make sense, and I don't care how crazy things get, it may not make sense, but God is still God. He got me. Amen. The same God who saved me in a way that does not make sense can allow things that quote unquote don't make sense in my life and still be that loving God who saved me in a way that doesn't make sense. He's not answering us. He's God, and we have to recognize him. He is God. And what he allows, we allow and we pray for because he's promised that what he allows Wow, he'll make a way for us to come through. We're okay. He is God. We don't question him. It's okay to say, God, why? It's okay. You're human. But in your heart of hearts, you have to know that God is God. He's got this. He's got you covered. And he won't let it get too hot for you to handle. We serve a God who can take the heat out of the fire as Hebrew boys. And he can take the wet out of water as Israel. As, as Israel. So if you allow me to put it this way, he can take the hot out of, out of fire and the, and the wet out of water. He says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I don't have to do things that make sense to anybody. And I will bring to naught the understanding of prudence. 
God says, compared to the way I think, man, it's, 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 not, it's not a comparison. Verse 20, he goes on. Somebody give me verse 20. Read it for verse 20. <clears throat> Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. <laughs> Are you following? <laughs> <laughs> okay this is how deep god is we we live in a, in, in a world where where people love to figure things out they love to have everything calculated and understand everything and god says i will take what makes sense to man and i'll make nothing out of it and what's foolishness to him that's what i'll use God's, God's letting you know he is God. These verses, he's letting you know I'm God. He's saying, you know, I, I don't have to do things in a way that makes sense to people. He has saved us in a way that makes no sense. And he says, I will say by the foolishness of preaching. That's God talking. Those who what? Believe. Believe. Apart from works. I'll come in and I'll save you on the basis of faith. It makes no sense. What do I have to do? <laughs> They asked Peter, what must I do to be saved? <clears throat> Peter's reply was, repent and be baptized. Metanoia, change your heart and mind to every one of you. Be baptized in Jesus' name. For the mission of your sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't have to do something. I don't have to know. It's about believing. And we call that foolishness by our perspective because you should do something to get for me to earn eternal life i should have to do this and do that and do that and do that and then maybe one day i earn it it pleased god to save people by the foolishness of preaching <laughs> <laughs> he does things in a way many times we don't understand he saves us in a way we don't really fully understand and appreciate sometimes and he's doing things in your life you don't fully understand and appreciate sometimes let him be god the answers to no one Comments. I'll go to verse 22. Verse 22. Give me a read it. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Here's the issue with the Jews. They had the Old Testament and they knew a Messiah was coming. And, and we know from studying the book of John, some of the high priests even knew that one man should die for the whole world, for the, sins of the, for the sins of that nation. But they wanted a sign. They kept telling Jesus, prove us the Messiah. We want a sign, we want a sign, do something. And did he show many signs? <laughs> How about <laughs> raising the dead, healing the sick, <laughs> opening the eyes, of, and it's just like, show us a sign. I mean, when you are blind, you know, the, Paul talks about the blindness that come upon Israel. You know, how can you ask somebody who's raising the dead, healing the sick, Storm withered hands, commanding storm to be still, telling dead men to come out of the tomb, casting out devils, killing every man of sickness and disease, speaking to the wind. How can you, at feeding 5,000 people with, with a few, how can you ask them to show us a sign? The Jews require a sign. And Jesus said, none should be given you but the sign of Jonah. Three days, he was in the belly of the well. Three days, I'd be in the earth. He did all that, and they still couldn't see it, looking for a sign. The Jews were looking for a sign. Israel had a blindness upon them. Couldn't see it. And the Greeks look at the things. The non-Jews want to hear stuff that makes sense. So you got two issues with the cross. When I preach the cross, that Christ died for our sins and rose again. That's the gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall be saved. The response to the gospel. When I preach that gospel, it doesn't make sense. 
<clears throat> it's a stumbling block to Jews because it destroys the whole system of, of the works of the law, keeping and doing and all the requirements. And it doesn't make sense to people who do not understand grace. Next verse. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. We preach Christ anyway. It's a stumbling block to the Jews and it doesn't make sense to the Gentiles. Read. Same reader. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. <clears throat> But then, which are called. <laughs> we talked about being called. But to those of us who God has called, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We understand the wisdom of God. Why? Because I can't do enough to get into heaven. I'm, I, I start to understand it. I can't, I can't, in my own self, manufacture enough righteousness to have my account squared away up there. So it's wisdom. <laughs> You know, if I'm, if I'm getting ready to shoot a three-point shot for my life and you give me a choice of me shooting it or Steph Curry, what am I going to do? Hmm. Now, Pastor John's the only one this call that probably would take the shot himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm taking Steph on that one. <laughs> uh, you say that, but you, you know, you might. <laughs> you, you're a good shooter. Great shooter. But certainly, I would take, have somebody take my place who could do it. So the question is, do I want to be saved based on what I've done or be saved based on what Christ has done? It makes sense to the world that you'd be saved based on what you've done. But God is saying, I will save you based on what Christ has done. Give him the glory. Give him the credit. I didn't save you based on what you have done. It doesn't make sense. I will save you based on what Christ said. It ought to give us some blessed assurance. So no, we'll say based on what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. That's a firm foundation. And so he says here, the foolish of God is wiser than me. We are secure. And the weakness of God is stronger than me. What does he mean? Does God have a weakness? What's he saying? What's he saying in this verse? What seems to be weak in structure, argument, understanding, what seems to be deficit is stronger than me. And God, he used the foolishness of preaching or the weakness of this approach as we would look at it, where we don't get what we deserve. We would see flaws in that. Maybe a better word here is flaws. Mm -hmm. Is wiser than men, stronger than men. What we see is inappropriate and not workable. Mm -hmm. God sees as strong and durable. Amen. Amen. Grace is amazing. He's talking about grace in this verse. He's talking about the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. What's weak and foolish is actually strong and wise. Mm. God's plan, where you don't earn your way in, you're saved by grace, it's not weak, it's God's, it's God's plan, it's strong. Mm -hmm. It's not foolish for you to not be punished based on what you have done, or rewarded based on what you've done. It's strength, it's wisdom, because God knew that this was the way that you could make it. If we can make it on our own without Christ, Paul says, if righteousness comes by works of law, Christ is dead in vain. This was the only way. Because Jesus asked, if possible, Father, move. if there was some other way God could save men other than giving us a righteousness, it would have been answered when Jesus said, Father, if possible, move his cup. There was no other way possible for God to give <clears throat> all of our sins and to save this whole world other than to sacrifice himself through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, nevertheless, thy will be done. He's talking about grace, the plan of salvation. We should never take it for granted. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank comments you. there. Any other comments? Elder Bob, I have a question. Yes. So when it speaks about the foolish things of the world, is that equating to the things that we try to do to establish our righteousness? Come, come, come to uh, which verse you're talking about, sweetheart? Uh, the, the first verse you were talking about, but you were talking about the grace being the second part of that, uh, the 27th verse. Oh, for so God's God yeah. the foolish things yeah. of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, the um, the it's it's the way the world looks at it. It's foolishness. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, talking about grace here because it's saying because it's it is foolishness now for for the world for me to do one thing and you to pay for it. You okay. know, I I go in and and, 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 and and grab what I want from the market and you get stuck with the bill. That's God's system. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, Pastor, um, but dealing with Muslims, this is one of the first things that you get to. I mean, that they just, they just, they just automatically run to this. Um, they run to the, how, how can one man pay for somebody else? You know, they, they just automatically run to that. So you see, you see this played out in uh, when you when you talk to people of different, you know, religious backgrounds all, all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and so the world is foolishness, uh, Steph. You know, I I don't go in and get bread and, and say, well, somebody else pay for this. You know, <clears throat> give the next person comes in. You know, grace is something that Pastor John just said. I mean, probably Muslim is probably good good example. But um, grace is something that is hard, and, and, and people don't get that. You know, and, and that's why people have no confidence even after they get saved. They, I gotta I gotta go. I gotta go do something. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. It just understand that Christ paid it all. My job is to live out that grace. I've also heard the argument that well, what, what kind of God would punish somebody else <clears throat> for somebody else's sin? Well, what kind of God is that? Yeah, that's yeah. That's that, Jesus. Uh, well, yeah, that's foolishness, isn't it? That's foolishness to them. That's foolishness to them, right? Don't make no sense. <laughs> we, need to throw, we need to throw in, he punished himself. <laughs> <laughs> that part right. is. <laughs> Amen. Brittany just did. Amen. Brittany put that on there. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> That's right, so, but then you're going down a whole other rabbit hole with that one, the God here. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and that's why, that's why it's so hard for people to accept the gospel because they, they, if we were going around telling people you got to do this, 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 we, we might have a lot of people pay more attention. But when, when you tell them Christ paid it all, yeah. Yeah, they're like, ah, that's just too easy, you know. And that's why God uses his wisdom to confound the world. He gets to, and he and he, and he he gets down to the point, uh, which we're gonna get down to verse uh, 20, what's that, 29? No flesh it will. That he'll explain it. Okay, give me what verse did we stop at? I have a question. Yes, that's sir. okay. Okay. Um, so when you talk about like you know what you have to do after you're saved and things like that. Um, so in Revelations 2 and 3, um, uh -huh. you know, Jesus is talking to the church. Mm -hmm. uh, to these different churches and this is right. after um after the cross you know after the resurrection uh -huh. and he's telling the churches i know your works mm -hmm. and some of the churches he says um i found your works unfinished and so how, how does that fit into um to this here oh it, it, it's it's our response our works because we if we go to ephesians um somebody go to ephesians 2 in verses um Start, start at verse seven. Excellent question, Jonathan. And, and you know, the thing is, I know you know the answer, <laughs> but I think you're asking for edification for everybody. So that's great. A great question. But let's go to Ephesians 7, verse, chapter 2, in verse, uh, start at verse uh, 7. That in the ages to come, mm -hmm. he might show the exceeding riches mm -hmm. of his grace uh -huh. and his kindness toward us uh -huh. through Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Uh -huh. And that not of yourselves, right. it is the gift of God, mm -hmm. not of works, mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. For we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, so it says by, um, give me those last two verses again. Not of works. Not of works, by gracious aid through faith. Not of works, uh-huh. Lest any man should boast. Lest any man should boast. So he says, no works. Now, you're not saved by works. Right there. And then what's the next part? Give me. For we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Unto good works. 
And so he, right if he says, you're not saved by works, he said, we've been created unto good works, <laughs> right in the same section. So uh, to answer uh, Jonathan's question, we absolutely do good works because that's the purpose God created us. We're not saved by works, he makes it clear, but we've been created unto good works, which we go out and live out in response to this great grace, we go out and do the right things. So we all have assignments and jobs to do, but we're not saved on the basis of it. So outstanding question. Saved by grace, rewarded by works. When we get to heaven, some of us will have great rewards and others will have less rewards because we're saved by grace. All the saved by grace, we're rewarded by works. So we expect us to do our job in the kingdom. Amen. It's just like having a son in your house, a kid in your house, you have your child. You know, nothing they did entitled them to be in your house with your child. They were born into your family. But you do expect them, I've got some assignments for you. Clean your room, <laughs> wash your dishes, do this or that. You have a job to do. And so okay. there's a job for all of us to do. Thank you for answering that. I have, I have one more question too. So yes, um, like, so if a Christian uh, says, um, you know, I'm saved by grace. And so mm-hmm. I'm going to sin and then I'm just gonna keep asking for forgiveness and keep sinning. Mm-hmm. Are there any consequences to that? Oh, absolutely. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter. And uh, Paul, he deals with this real quickly. Excellent question. I, I appreciate your uh, line of thinking on this because this helps with the presentation of the gospel. Uh, give me Romans 6, beginning at uh, verse 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? That grace, that so grace can abound? God forbid. God forbid. No way. How shall we? How shall we? That are dead to sin. Dead to sin. Live any longer therein. Live any longer therein. Now give me verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal Let not body, sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So he's clear. He's, he, 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 said, he said, this is not how we handle grace. Absolutely. So the question, the, uh, the, 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 the question, the answer is they are totally against scripture. If they take that attitude, they are totally uh, uh, going, being contract to word of God. And, and they, you can show them that you're in the sin because you violate the plan and word of God. How can we the dead to sin, living longer than end, let not sin reign? So absolutely not. And, and that whole sixth chapter explains that's a contrary attitude. And, and yeah. if a believer did that, would there be any consequences or would it just be like, um, you know, that you're going against the will of God, but you're covered? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there, there's two levels of sin. Uh, and you have, else can jump in you want, but there's two levels that we get disciplined in sin. And one is that sin has a natural consequences. The ways of sin can be death sometimes. There's a natural consequence to you. If you get caught, for example, a said believer goes and, and, and you know, commits adultery. A natural consequence there might be he might get caught and might get killed by that husband. You know, um, if he goes to the store and steals money, he might get caught and, and go to jail. And so uh, that's a natural consequence. And the other consequence is even if he gets away with it, God is not going to let him get away with it. We know from the book of Hebrews, we studied this passage on uh, God's discipline chapter uh, 12, how if we carry on, uh, God will discipline us. We know from Hebrews 12 chapter, 1 Corinthians, and 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, that God disciplines his children. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged of God, but when we are judged, we're chastised of God. So if we carry on in a particular sin and don't um, confess that sin, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 shows three ways that God can deal with us. Now, he didn't have to do these, but he talks about being weak, being sickly, and sometimes we can get taken out. So God will deal with his children. It's a long lesson on discipline, but sometimes God will deal with you. If you, you carry on unconfessed sin, God will discipline you. He, he will, quote, unquote, chastise you. And the Bible says in Hebrews, again, uh, 12, that no chastisement is uh, pleasant. But uh, after a while, it works repentance. So, and we see that in the, in the scriptures where even in this, in this book where saints got in sin and Paul said, uh, one particular saint got in sin and Paul said, turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the body that the spirit might be saved. In other words, God can do things to your body. When you're carrying on like you want to, stiff arm in the Lord, one of the ways God gets you is to slow your body down. <laughs> and this is why James 5 says, when somebody's lying on a sick bed, uh, let him call for the church. And if he committed any sin, indicating that you might be down there because of sin. So yeah, God, God, God will give you a chance to correct yourself. And God is like a good parent, any other good parent. He doesn't always whoop you. But if you, if you get stiff, if you start stiffing arm in him, get stiff 
be stiff hearted about it and just brazen about it, uh, then God will let you know he's God and, and he's who the daddy is. He'll let you know who the daddy is. <laughs> so um, another excellent question, John. Awesome. Thank, thank you for answering those. I love how um, any question I ask you, you can go straight to a part of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> All right, very good. I love the interaction. Thank you. Excellent line of questions. Um, what verse are we on? What time do we do? Excellent. I love, I'm loving this this morning. I love it when it's interactive like this. Okay, great. We got, we got time. God is good. Get a lot done. It's going on time. Okay, uh, we're on verse 25. Go ahead, somebody. Oh, we finished 25. On oh, 26. Thank you, babe. 26. He makes a slight pivot here, but he stays on the theme, as you'll see. Verse 26, slight pivot. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, mm -hmm. not many mighty, not mm -hmm. many noble are mm -hmm. called. He, he says, you look around the church, you don't see all these uh, politicians, you don't see the governors, you don't see the filthy rich, you don't see the people with titles and positions in the church. You don't see what the world values and esteems crowding the church. And, and it's kind of a, a, a two prongs um, fork here because on the one hand, a lot of people uh, look at the earthly accomplishment, earthly accomplishments and say they don't need the Lord. It's kind of sad. They put their trust in, in riches and things. And at the same time, the ones who are poor and don't have much are so excited a lot of times about the gospel because they don't have the blindness of that stuff. The Bible says riches have a deceitfulness to them. And Jesus said it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So the two-pronged sword is it's a blessing to have um, earthly things because you can have some capability and capacity and you can take care of things and do the things you want for your wife and kids and family and whatnot and it's nice to have this thing but the other prong of that is that man it can really blind you to receiving Christ you get distracted your focus is on maintaining your wealth maintaining your position what do people think but we don't have our on the table and somebody presents the gospel you can see it clearer the things this world tend to blind position power money so it's a double-edged sword. I'm sorry to mix analogies, but it's a double-edged sword here. It's good to have things, but don't let things have you. But he makes this point that in this church, in Corinthian church, there's not a lot of wealthy, well-to-do, high-esteem folk. If you look around churches today, the ones seeking God at this whole heart, you might not, even this day, see a lot of the billionaires and millionaires and the leaders because some of that stuff blinds them. It's a sad, it's a sad editorial. But it goes on to say in verse 27, give me verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are the things which are mighty. Next verse. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. He's basically saying that God doesn't look at the way we look at it. Esteem is not measured by this world. True riches are not something God values. Uh, a, a true riches in this world are not something God values. He's looked at the, the exact opposite. Man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. And the reason is given in verse 29 to tie it all together. Give me verse 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence. So God is saying what you have here and who you are here doesn't count in my kingdom. You know, some churches, and I'm, I'm just going to say it, how can you have a VIP section in church? I'm just going to say it. You know, I, I, I want to be critical of, you know, ministries and ministers and ministers. 
some churches have VIP sections where the celebrities of this world sit and you and I can't sit. It's called respected persons. And I, I don't mean to criticize anybody by name, but I, I need, I'm just making this point here. That stuff means nothing to the Lord. No flesh glories in the sight. God is letting you know that the glory belongs to him. And he chose the base, the common things. You look around church, you see common people. You don't see a lot of billionaires and millionaires. You don't see a lot of well to do a lot of times. That no flesh should glory. God wants all the glory. And the Bible talks about those who put their trust in riches, their trust in things. And even in the parable of the sword, Jesus talks about how things get in the way. The, the, the seed that fell among thorns, these days sprang up, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choked them out. There was some seed that went in, but the, but the thorns, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word. And he said, don't get misguided. Don't get misplaced. I saw a comment pop up. Somebody read it real quick. I didn't, somebody give me a comment. Maybe somebody couldn't speak it. But. Sister that? Stephanie said, oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Sister Stephanie said, what's sad is many of those people are broken on the inside. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The ones who have, and, and, and you probably look at the suicide rates is higher among those who quote unquote have things. But these things um, have choked them out. And if you go back and look at the, look at the, the parable of the sower, it's amazing that the word went in and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word. And these people ended up not being saved. Hmm. And the point is that what you have doesn't matter to God. <laughs> Who gave it to you? God. And, and, and does God need any of it? And, it's, and Paul is teaching these Corinthians, don't get caught up in who you are and, and, and who you think you are. And look around, you'll see that, that, that my, not mighty people, not many mighty and noble by your standards to say, because God says no flesh and glory in his sight. It's all about Jesus. That no flesh and glory in his presence. Give me the next verse, 30. He's going to explain it. Let me first start, somebody. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You are in Christ, and he is everything you need. He is your esteem. He is your wisdom. He is your righteousness. He is your sanctification and redemption. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Everything you have, even the faith you have is of God. You thought you believed because you, 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 you believe. Your faith was given you by God. We know that from Ephesians 2. God gets the credit for everything. Why? Give me verse 31. That according as it is written, written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And there's what the Lord is saying. You got the give him the glory. We have to give him the glory. No matter how we slice and dice it, God gets the glory for our salvation. God's glory, God gets the credit. God gets the credit for our faith. God gets the credit for our salvation. God gets the credit for all we can do is live for him and say, thank you, Lord. We owe him everything. He did everything that was needed. He looked at our poor and pitiful condition. He came down. He died. He saw nothing else could help. He offered himself. How can we not now give him glory? We don't brag, we don't boast, we don't feel proud about what we do and how we live. We just live our life to say thanks. And this is what God is after. The Father seeks such to worship him. God wants the glory. Jesus said the hour was coming, now he is. Now he is. When they that worship God, must worship him in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God's looking for the glory. We have to give God the glory for our lives. We don't get any credit. The, the, the word glory there is doxa. We can think of it as credit. God gets the credit. And that's what he's after. God wants the glory. We have to give God his new glory. Amen.
you know, questions, comments on chapter one. All right, three Sundays, pastor, pastors. <laughs> I lost right. some on that. <laughs> I'm impressed. All right. We got, we got through chapter one. And we saw that in the end, God just wants the glory. Saints, we just got to give God the glory. Give him the glory. It's through his name. And, 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 I, and I'm preaching to the choir because I, I see a church here that gives God glory, to give God thanks. Gives God glory. Let's just never forget that he, he paid it all. We owe it all to him. No matter what we go through in life, he deserves our faith, our loyalty, our endurance, everything we can offer him because Jesus truly paid it all. Amen. All right, that's our, that's our lesson. So I'll turn it uh, hands to these uh, other pastors for comments before we go back to the, and I think, um, it, are we beginning this Sunday with Facebook at 12 o'clock, Pastor Darrell? That's correct. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, Facebook, we're, we're going to move to standard time at 12 o'clock because no need to rush off the line when we're done. But I'll get back to these other pastors for other comments. Before we go back to uh, Minister Harper. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Uh, that was that was extremely thorough um, lesson. And uh, I'm shocked it was uh, Pastor Bobby did it in three. <laughs> <laughs> Love chapter one. That was it was really good. Um, I just uh, it just reemphasizes the cross. I mean, it really reemphasizes the cross. I mean, uh, you know, the cross, the cross of Christ. Uh, I'm just I'm just so thankful that uh, that that is our way. And, and you ask, you know, of course, a person wants credit or wants whatever, but. Do you really want to stand on your own, uh, you know, before the living God? <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just thankful for Jesus. Like, uh, I know that, you know, and I think that it comes from two places, but, but one of the silly places, one of the two, the silliest of the two is the lack of understanding of the righteousness of God. You know, if you, if we could really understand how righteous God was, which I don't know if we can. I don't think we can. But if we could really understand how righteous God is, we wouldn't. We we wouldn't even dare try to try to approach God without the blood of Jesus. You know, I mean, we've just we would be we'd be running for the hills. So I I just thank the Lord. Awesome lesson, Pastor Darrell. Hey Amen. I thought it was a, another another very beautiful lesson um, on on the cross once again. And at the end of the day, God can get His glory and can get His glory. You know, out of us preaching the cross, and uh, I, I look at this part. It had to be a lot of pressure on Paul to go do something which the world is thinking is foolishness, and, and you're going to keep preaching the cross. And verse 22 said the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks want wisdom. Well, Paul had both of those things. He could say, "Y'all don't want the cross. Well, y'all want a sign. I can do a miracle. Paul could raise the dead too." I mean, I could razzle dazzle, do everything y'all need, have a big meeting, thousand out of line, everything else. What you want? I got that too. He had all the wisdom and all the power. He could raise the dead. He could do a sign. But he, he said, I ain't doing that. I'm going to preach this foolishness to you. And I, 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 how much pressure is that? And how much determination is that to just keep doing what he's supposed to do? Preaching the cross. So that's not, there's no room for us to error here because we don't have those kind of gifts. But we could certainly preach the cross. No one's asking me for a sign. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have any pressure. All we got to do is keep preaching the cross. Just keep preaching the cross. And that's, that's such a beautiful, beautiful, powerful lesson. And it kind of gets back to what, you know, I guess our uh, mantra here at Oak City Church is preaching the cross of Christ. So a uh, powerful lesson, powerful lesson. Amen. Amen. Just want to say what a wonderful lesson. Glad to be a part of a Bible teaching church. Thank you so much. At this time, we would like to welcome all our visitors and thank our friends and family for joining us uh, for this service. I want you to know that if you have a word or you'd like to say something to us, now is the time. Thank you, and we welcome your comments. If not, we're going to move on to our giving opportunity with Sister Sharon Haley.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your continued support of the ministry. Um, if you, uh, the given opportunities are on the screen. If you can see them, uh, you can give me a cash app, uh, Givelify, Zelle, or Venmo. Um, and you can mail a check or money order to the post office box 13642, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73113. And make your check or money or order out to Oak City Community Church. If you need to speak with a minister, please uh, can call us or text 405-778-4949. Again, thank you so much for your support. And uh, please continue to pray for us. And if you need prayer, please call. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Sharon Haley. And at this time, we're gonna ask for our closing prayer by Brother Jonathan Davis. Are there any uh, prayer requests? I'm just gonna ask you to keep the Tylers in your prayer and my family. Thank you. Absolutely. Ask them for prayer for me and my family. Absolutely, Brother Carl. Father God, thank you so much um, for giving us another day, um, another Sunday. Father God, um, thank you so much for um, for getting us through this um, through this chapter, through this lesson. Um, God, please help us to absorb what we've learned today, God, um, and help us to remember um, the importance of the cross, God, as as, as we continue forward. Um, and Father God, we want to lift up um, the Tylers. God, we know that they're uh, going through an extremely difficult time. And so, God, we just want to pray that you'd be with them, uh, that you'd provide them comfort, um, and that you just fortify, God, their faith in you. Um, God, we just want to pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding, God, um, to be with them in, in this time of heartbreak. Um, and God, we just want to lift up um, Brother Carl. God, you know um, the needs that he has. God, please continue to be faithful to him. God, please continue to help him and sustain him. Uh, God, please continue to, to watch over his health. Um, watch over, uh, watch over his finances and, um, and, and keep him safe. Um, and Father God, we just want to pray for um, everybody on this line. Uh, God, as we go into this next week, uh, we want to pray that we be aligned with your will, um, that we would clearly hear what you've called us to do. Um, and God, that we would be a light um, as we go into the workplace and as we go into the world. Uh, in Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. 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 Amen, and thank you so much. We want you to meet us on Facebook at 12 o'clock. Remember, God loves you, and so do we. And this concludes our morning service for Bible study. Thank you.